most cutting-edge thing about Hannes Hörblad isn't the phone in his hand, it's the microchip actually in his hand. The tiny implant is the latest advance in a biohacking technology that is steadily becoming a part of normal life in Sweden. We have created a new implant which is not a chip, it's a full device where you can add different lights, different uh, vibration, different functions. Sweden is a very tech literate society and I think this is the main explanation really why a lot of Swedes are uh, adopting chip implants. Swedes haven't been shy about upgrading themselves with the new version. Thousands already have microchip implants that they use in their daily lives. Waving their hand to gain entrance to the gym, confirm their ID or make payments. A short moment of pain not putting them off becoming part Swede, part machine. This event is an implant party, simply where ordinary people can show up and get a microchip embedded under their skin. The biohacking movement in Sweden is hosting them all over Europe, but it's at home where they get the most willing recipients. I think it's really cool. You don't have to carry any keys or anything. It's just your body. In maybe 10 years, everything will be in your hand. In Sweden more than anywhere else, the future is already here. The national train company SJE has around 2,600 people signed up to use microchips instead of train tickets. Did you see that? And no need to mind the generation gap. 18-year-old Felicia and father Magnus still bear the scars of their new implants. Student Hannah Herving is also freshly chipped and now just needs to program it to open doors. Although importantly for a future career, it does already connect to her LinkedIn. Some people say I'm mad that um, I don't know if it's safe and all that, but people have been putting these chips into animals for 20 years, so I'm not worried about that. The long-term goal is for the new chips to help provide medical care in remote communities. They're already getting under the skin of the Swedes and may soon become just another normal part of modern life. What I'm here to share with you is a testimony of where I lived, the people I spent my time with. I was an engineer for 32 years. And that's not important, but what is important is what I have to share with you. Many people have asked me, isn't there some way around this, this device, this microchip? Could a, blood, could a glove be made with a microchip in it so I could still get food? We have the greatest answer, and that is Jesus Christ. In 1966, I was, I was put on a project. I had been with IBM, and, and uh, now I was with General Electric. The project was to develop a little micro circuit that would connect the nerve ends on a broken spine back together. This seemed like a good idea to me and it's something that, uh, that I would want to be a part of. I was a very zealous engineer. I worked very hard. I worked many long hours. I was a design engineer and used Boolean algebra, Boolean equations to design computer circuits. We did not, we were not successful with the young lady with the broken, with the severed spine. And as time went along, it looked like they were going to close our project down. We had learned many things, but she was not doing well. Much of our research data had been publicized. And some men came to us that we were to find out were from the government. They were from the CIA and the FBI. And they asked us to develop a little microchip for identification. This was to be used not in human beings, not in animals, but to be put in drug shipments to catch drug dealers. They came with a lot of money, and so we were willing to do whatever we could. I want to tell you at this point that I was not a Christian, and I did not want anything to do with Christians. We had developed the first identification device and it was completed in the early 70s. They came back to us and they said we want something better than that. 
And so we said, if you have enough money, we can develop anything. I was not alone there. There were a hundred people involved in the project. Some were from General Electric, some from Motorola, some were from the Bell Laboratory, some were from the Boston Medical Center, and some were from Stanford University. My responsibility was project leader or the, pro the senior project engineer. We began to work on the design of a microchip that when it was completed was 0.75 millimeters in diameter, 7 millimeters long. It was the size of one-fourth of a grain of rice. Again, I want to say that I was not a Christian and there were no Christians there. They said they wanted this to have a power source and be able to emit a signal. And they told us they wanted us to use lithium as a battery source. Lithium's used in watch batteries, it's used in uh, heart pacemaker batteries, it's used in a lot of places. I designed into this microchip a little charging circuit that would charge that battery. This sounds like a lot of technical things coming together, but if you'll bear with me one minute, you'll see what God has laid out about this microchip. When we discovered that we needed to know, we needed to be able to charge that battery, I needed a temperature change, a change in temperature, to cause current to flow through that little charging circuit that would charge the battery. So I began to we began to investigate and find out where in the body does the temperature change the most rapidly. We spent over a million dollars in taxpayer money and when the results came back there were the information, uh, there was a lot of information. We divided it up amongst three teams and then came back together with that information. It was determined that there were two places in the body that were ideal for the microchip. One was just below the hairline on the forehead. Every mother checks their child's temperature right here. So we could have paid the mothers a million dollars and saved a... I never saw a mother check their child's temperature on their ankle. Always right here. The other place was the hand, the right hand preferred, because most people are right-handed. This didn't bother me, and it didn't bother anybody else on the team. The hand seemed a good place. Nobody wanted it here. And so the design work, everything was completed, the microchip was done. You are seeing it now on some of the Discovery Channel presentations. Uh, uh, there are people who have received it already. It is real. It's not something that's Shaker. coming way down the road. They gave me a Bible. They told me not to read the book of Revelation. They said the book of Revelation is, uh, is too hard to understand. So I waited, and I didn't read the book of Revelation for quite some time. Then one day I came to Revelation 13, verse 16. And he caused us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. I didn't like what I saw. I went back and looked up the word mark. I went to the Strong's Concordance, and I found that John had used three words for the word mark. Char, char, charagma, charakter, and charax. That was from the Greek. I looked at those words. They talked about a scratch or an etching. They talked about a lot of things. And I said, God, this isn't it. We didn't do it. He said, go to the word for 666. The word is chixastigma. In the Greek, it says to go to 4742 as a cross, the last half of the word chixastigma. And when I looked at what it said, it says, stizo, i.e. to stick, to prick, a mark incised or punched into for recognition of ownership. I thought about the little injection tool, the end of it is called an incisor. I began to weep and I began to cry and I said, oh God, what have we done? I couldn't believe that this lined up with what we had developed and I began to run from God.
I didn't run away from the church, I ran into the church. I tried to do as many things as I could to, to atone for this. But I want to tell you something, as God is my witness here tonight, this got in the way. Money got in the way. I had beautiful homes overlooking the lake. I had, a, I had all the things that I wanted. And I ran because of the money. My ability to go and get a quarter million dollars in research money took me away from telling the message. I ran for many years. What I want to tell you is that this is real. The microchip implant is real. Uh, Credit cards are failing. Uh, they, they can be counterfeited. The new smart card can be counterfeited. Uh, they can be stolen. They can be uh, lost. All kinds of things can happen to a card. But you cannot lose your hand. Very quickly they're going to move to this being in the hand. And I tell you as a Christian, you cannot take this. No matter what anybody says, God's Word says you cannot take it. No matter what they try to talk you into, God's Word says don't take it. In Revelation 14, verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It's very simple, God's word says, do, do not take it. Today there have been over 15,000 babies that have been given the positive identification, the microchip. Many companies are using the microchip as identification in their top level employees. The Immigration Naturalization Service has a better passport, the human hand. So many of these things are all around us. We talk about the signs of the New World Order. God has spelled out in His Word just exactly what's going on today in the New World Order. Satan, Satan desires to have a one world government. From the time he fell, he said, I want a one world government. He wants to replace God. And so we see a government put together by men, a one world government. The signs of the times are all around us. We look at the fullness of time in the Bible. In Galatians, it talks about it was the fullness of time when Jesus Christ came. It is now the fullness of time again as we see His soon return. I'm excited about His return. I believe He is coming soon. And I'm excited about His coming. And I praise God for Him. And so I tell you, this generation shall not pass away, my Bible says. How close are we? That's rapture practice. You need to be ready to go. He's coming soon. I praise God for you. Last night I talked about my involvement in the development of a little microchip implant. And many people have already taken that microchip implant. The news media has talked about it being a good thing. And they will tell you that it's a good thing to have this. Your children won't ever get lost again. They won't be able to give you the wrong medication. They won't be able to, you won't be able to lose this thing. And so the plan is underway that you will receive it. I would be remiss if I came to you and didn't tell you that God's word says, don't you take it. No matter how nice they make it sound. Tonight in the science of technology, I'm going to be showing you some things. 
I want you to understand that there is a conditioning that is done in people. The television, I call it a Babylonian idiot box. On the television, you are being conditioned to accept certain things. There is one good thing on television. It is the off knob. Yes. Amen. Spend as much time, spend as much time in God's Word as you do watching the Babylonian idiot box. And God will speak to you through His Word. And so you are being very easily conditioned. I've been in 17 One World meetings. I was in Luxembourg with Henry Kissinger, George Schultz, and Bob Gates in a meeting. It was discussed there about the microchip. I was asked many questions, and I answered those questions. I've also asked God to forgive me for being in those meetings. They said, we'll make them aware of lost children. And so, after that meeting, on paper bags and milk cartons all over the United States, there were pictures of lost children. And then one day, all of those pictures disappeared. They aren't on the paper bags and milk cartons anymore. Because you had been conditioned. And now when you look at a paper bag or a milk carton, you think about lost children. We think like we are told to think. That's the reason why you have to have your mind renewed in Jesus Christ. This has to be in here. He has to be, give you the new mind. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. That's the reason why he said it. Today's technology is the key to the long-standing mysteries of Bible prophecy concerning the last days. It, it just, it reaches out to us. This technology that we have today is addressed to this generation. What it's telling us is that the time is short. I want to show you the microchip. This is a, called a Destron IDI chip. This is about the size of a grain of rice. It has a little receiving antenna and a transmitting antenna. It has a microchip in the glass envelope. So this gives you a little look. We'll look at some more a little bit later. One of the things that we see, fiber optics. You see the orange bundles being put all around under the ground in, in most of the areas uh, that we live in. The fiber optics allow fast transmissions of, uh, from our phone lines, but also it will open up our homes to the two-way communication for uh, video communication, being able to uh, see one another when we speak. Every time that you talk on the telephone, they are monitoring your, t your phone conversation. Microchips are used to keep track of animals on military bases. Microchips also can, they talk about why carry cards when an implant will do the trick. This was in Computing Magazine. You can lose a credit card, you can, it can be stolen, but you cannot lose your hand. And so the advantages to a microchip in the hand are very good for the world. So we see there is a, there is a conditioning, a telling people that it is proper to have something on your hand. This was in one of the magazines, revealed a secret plan to tag every man, woman, and child. I'm not happy over what is happening. But I praise God that I can tell you and the next group and the next group because time is running out. Everybody's trying to figure out 666. Who is it? He says what it is. I believe that there will be an Antichrist. As sure as there is a Christ, there is an Antichrist. And he will want to implement this system. People ask me if 666 is in the microchip. When it was my responsibility to design this microchip, I had been working on a computer that was 18 bits. The word was 18 bits in length. When I, when I designed this, 
I used much of the same Boolean equations. And so this microchip came out to be an 18-bit chip. There are three 6-bit bytes. This whole microchip is 666. As I told you before, I was not a Christian. I did not, I could have cared less. This d happened simply because that was what we were designing. I believe God knew when John was on the island of Patmos that it would be. He knew that it would be 18 bits. People say, how will this be used? The Immigration and Naturalization Service is already offering a better passport, the human hand. You have the microchip in a card, and you put your hand in and put the card in, and it reads your hand, and it knows that that is you. However, if you do not want to use the card, you can have an option of having the chip in the hand. We see that 20,000 people chose the microchip in the hand. It's not going to be hard to get people to take it. They're going to think it's a good thing. God's Word says don't take it. I want you to turn with me to Revelation for a moment. In my efforts to try to stop the microchip from being, to, to stop it from being manufactured, I knew that research had not been done on the effects of lithium in the body. So I called a doctor at the Boston Medical Center who had been on the project. I said, what would happen if the microchip gets shattered or broken and the lithium is in the body? He said you would get a sore. He said you would get a sore like a boil. I said, what kind of sore like a boil? And I was writing all the time. He said, you'd get a grievous sore. It would not heal. What? I was looking at Revelation 16.2 a short time after that. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. This is a single sore. Will God cause the microchip to be shattered in all those people that receive it? I what? don't know. What? I just think it's very unusual that there would be a sore that would be one sore, not many sores. God has very carefully told us in His Word not to take a mark in the forehead or in the hand. It was very easy to get babies to put this microchip in. All they did was run an ad in the paper and they said $25 will be paid for every child birth through one year old that you bring for a government experiment. Women lined up in the rain with their babies to get the microchip. And so the message I give you tonight and the message that we share is that this is real. Stand in God's Word and don't take it. I met with a man from the CIA in Manassas, Virginia, and he warned me about some of the things that I was saying. But he also told me, you can't stop this thing. And I told him, I'm not trying to stop it, I'm trying to warn God's people. And so our reason for being here is not to cause you to form a group to go against the government. Our reason for being here is to inform you so you will be stronger in Jesus Christ. I believe if God's people will pray that the best of the design that we have done can fall apart and we can have one more day, one more week, one more month to tell people about Jesus Christ. This is a diagram of the microchip, the BT-95-2000. It's the size of one-fourth of a grain of rice. So folks, the microchip is in the cards. It's being put in people. It's all over the place. It will allow us to go to a cashless society. Revelation 13.7 and Daniel 7.23 talk about a new world order. President Bush said, 
Iraq is the first test for the new world order. Clinton and Gore have both said they've stated that the solution to the problems of the world is a new world order, a one world government. And so we've come a long ways with many, many prophecies. Revelation 13, 16 says there will be a mark Apocalypse in the right hand or in the forehead. It says that no man might buy or sell save he that have the mark. And so we see the movement of these things to not only a one world order but the fulfillment of prophecy. <clears throat> why would why would they want a microchip implant? Because the Bible says that no man might buy or sell save he that have the mark. This is the book called Putting People First. In that book Clinton stated he wanted a national police force separate from the FBI having 100,000 police officers. He now has over 200,000 under him and Janet Reno. Boot camps for nonviolent first-time offenders. We have many of those across the country. Require all Americans to have a positive identification, a smart card, and then we know about the microchip. Establish a national information network, and because of that, the internet now has problems and the government is taking over the internet. It's interesting what we see. People ask, how did all this get started? We have ancient mystery religions, Kabbalism, Gnosticism, the Knights Templar, the Rosicrucians, Freemasonry, and the Illuminati. We see a formation of a one world government. And we say, when did this start? If you have a dollar bill, would you, you can take it out and look at this. On the dollar bill, the, the dollar bill, this was put on the dollar bill in 1933. There is the pyramid with the all-seeing eye of Osiris. It's a satanic pagan eye. Where we get the word secular from, world without God, ordo, order. Announcing the birth of the new world order. Not only Masons, there are other secret societies. And a Christian cannot belong to a secret society. The oaths that are required in these secret societies go against God. There is an organization called the Council of Foreign Relations. Let's look at the organizational chart. We see men like Schief, Warburg, Vanderlip, Rockefeller, Baruch, and Morgan. We see that the chairman is the Rothschilds from Germany. They control the Council of Foreign Relations. Even the executive department of the United States government. We see the news media is part of the Council of Foreign Relations. This is an interesting statement I want to show you. I've been in several meetings with Henry Kissinger. I understand uh, uh, less about him than, I, than if I'd never been in a meeting. He is a very mysterious man. But he is a mover in the world scene. He reports to the Rothschild organization. He sits at the second seat in the roundtable meetings. He is very much for a one world order. He is a Bilderberger from the Bilderberger organization, the same organization that our president is from. That was very long, but I want you to understand the plans to make a one world order have been in existence for a long time. There are a couple things that I think I can answer ahead of time, though. Uh, people ask me, did the babies who received the microchip, did they receive the mark? I believe you have to knowingly say, I want this thing. A baby would not be able to say that. An old person, an Alzheimer's patient, somebody in a nursing home would not have any control. They still have not received it. So they could have it taken back out. I was told last night that there was somebody that might be here tonight who has a microchip in their hand. I have not been able to verify that or talk to that person. Uh, 
this person received it at immigration in uh, coming from Mexico. And so once again, go to the Word of God. Let the Word of God show you what you need to do. And I praise God for every one of you. I thank you for allowing us to come. <laughs>